Hey, how's it going? If you've ever thought about making your own podcast and you kind of get into that analysis paralysis, you don't know how to start, check out Anchor. I'm telling you right now, Anchor is at the edge of technology. It's the easiest way for you to get your podcast going. I mean, you, all you have to do is you start it up on your phone. You don't need any kind of crazy setup and, 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 and advanced microphones or whatnot. You can do it off your phone or computer. And the cool thing about Anchor is that it automatically distributes it out to the most popular podcast platforms, right? So what I'm talking about is it can get it to you on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. And you can make money off your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's easy. And um, it's kind of an all-in-one. So check out Anchor. Get your ideas. Get your motivation out there into the public space. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started, okay? Download the app or anchor.fm to get started. What will the future of dating look like? Specifically in 2025, five years from now, five years from the time of this podcast. First off, I think that the world works on a pendulum. You've seen things come and go. You know, right now, say about a year or two ago, you saw the craziness of retro gaming systems. Nintendo made its comeback, Sega Genesis. I, I remember that Nintendo came back with the with the old 8-bit console, right? Where your Mario Brothers and your Zeldas and your Metroid, all those games that were a hit back in the uh, mid to late 80s, then all of a sudden, you're selling a console about, you know, 25 years later, and uh, they're a hit, right? So um, the w- world works in that kind of pendulum. I remember when, um, I'm sure Daisy Dukes are in a way back. They don't call them Daisy Dukes anymore. And uh, music, I mean, other than share. Uh, the 80s are making a comeback. Share has been around since. Heck. I'm sure Share is in some historical text. Shout out to Share, right? But um, when it comes to dating, we're going to make that pendulum shift. Right now, we're in this age, we're in this era of uh, tired communication, right? You're, uh, you're ghosting, you're endless swiping, uh, t- 20,000 apps out there when it comes to dating. So what you're going to see is you're going to see a comeback to re- relationship focused society, specifically when it comes to dating. And you can see this if you look at old shows, right? Friends. Um, you can look at Californication is a good example. Californication is actually set in the uh, in the 90s. That's my dog in the background. This one, you know, we're doing this live. She's she's uh, crying because she wants to leave. Anyways, um, leaves to her sitter. She knows she's gonna play with her buddies tonight. Um, so what, what's what's gonna end up happening is if if you look at these shows like Friends and uh, and and um, Californication and some of some of these like um, gosh, what's what's this other show? I can't even think of it right now. Um, it's got Kramer in it. Help me out here. If, if you if you hear this, help me out. Show that's got Kramer. Uh, Seinfeld. There you go. All, all these shows here, there was a little bit more of that courting process, right? Meeting the girl at the bar, buying her a drink. I'm sure that's still happening nowadays, but more, more than likely, we're busy staring at our phones and text messaging and checking emails and checking social media, et cetera, et cetera. You're going to see more of a focus on bringing back that socialization, you know, that humanizing the aspect of dating to the point that um, you're kind of starting to see it now. You're starting to see people that immediately want to meet, right? Instead of the, because they, they know they're going to risk a lot of endless swiping and messaging. So they're like, you know what? Let's meet up. So um, you're going to see that. I think websites like meetup.com, and um, Facebook events, anything that's geared towards getting people together, you're going to see a rise in those type of events. And uh, maybe I'm being biased because I, I had an events company 
uh, Synergy Dating years ago, which I might possibly bring back. Got to keep that on the hush. And I actually thought that it was a little bit um, ahead of its time, or at least the, the timing didn't work in some ways because um, years later after I started my company, that's when Tinder, Bumble, and all these sites, uh, all these apps blew up. So that right now I, I think is the, the future of dating is we're going to get back to wanting to become a tribal society, a society that wants to be together, wants to get to know each other in real life, IRL. Right now, though, we're kind of in this valley before we get there. You know, it's kind of a, a dating recession, if you want to call it that. And um, if you were to bet your money on the money market of dating, I would definitely invest your money in the next couple years. I mean that figuratively. Um, I would I would put my money instead of online dating, uh, start shifting over to in real world type of uh, meeting locations, areas, groups, clubs, things of that sort. That's where I see it going, especially because the uh, the generation that's going to take over that that socialization uh, by then, the ones that call us OK boomers will be the boomers themselves will be in their 30s and I'm sure by then they have been saturated and exhausted of their Snapchat, their Instagram and all these apps and they're going to want to push towards meeting in real life. So that's where I see dating in 2025. Now, as much as I despise talking about politics and news, the reason I, I really don't like it is because it's very di divisive. Uh, the second that I start uh, bringing something up, you know, you get one side that's all about it. You get another side that gets feels alienated or all of a sudden wants to, you know, feels triggered and wants to attack. And um, I have voted for both parties. Um, I'm a common sense voter. I vote along the, the, the lines of logic and not, you know, identifying myself with one group or the other. But uh, regardless, I do want to keep in mind those that have been affected by the earthquakes in Puerto Rico. Um, I am of Puerto Rican descent myself. I do have family there, both in a, a town called Naguabo, which is on the eastern side of the island, as well as Bayamon, which is close to San Juan. And fortunately, everything is good to go. Um, you know, no, no one in my immediate family has been affected. And hopefully that's that remains the case but when it comes to political peace being that i'm also military i am also hoping that we find some sort of um common sense resolution to this um iran versus u.s situation that's going on a couple days ago uh, we had about approximately about a dozen missiles that fired from uh, tehran to uh, al assad base in iraq and um you know he, he, let's put in perspective you have folks that join the military for different reasons, whether it's a legacy, right? They're third generation, fourth generation. Maybe some are trying to get out of a, a crappy situation, whether you know it's poverty, abusive homes, trying to make something of themselves. And they've grown up with this idea of wanting to be something beyond themselves. And the military is a, is a great place to do that. And um, fast forward all of a sudden now they're, they're on a base and they're hearing sirens go off and you know they're they're thinking this is it you know while everyone else is bickering back home on social media crying about you know some reality stars fall out they're wondering this is it right they hear the siren they they hear literally in 20 seconds they hear a a, a um, warning that a missile is about to uh, come down on their base and uh, fortunately, 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 we have, from what I'm told from ver verified sources, no casualties. But put that in perspective, right? You have folks that join, but at, as they say in the military, they all fall in. They, they all become part of a community. And uh, regardless, right? Regardless if you're a long tab, what they call it, you know, a, a special forces ranger, who's gone on 10 combat tours, or you're the um, about to retire officer or enlisted, or you're the new recruit who just got to basic. You're all part of a group. 
And um, I hope that those on the outside, those that do support or maybe don't support policies or sit on one side of the fence or the other, if you can just at least see, you know, the, the respect and uh, towards the sacrifice that these folks make, it is um, something I'm proud of being part of. And um, it's opened my eyes to uh, gratitude. So uh, that's what's going on nowadays. It's a good reminder if you're listening to this years later, months later, of what was going on in the world. But let's get back to the dating stuff here at the Dating Doc Podcast. Dating 2020 Boot Camp is about to start up. Do you want to be the type of person that keeps wasting money, keeps wasting your time, energy, and emotions, swiping endlessly, going on the wrong dates, or not going on dates at all? Or do you want to save money? Do you want to connect with people that matter? Do you want to go on better dates? Do you actually feel better about yourself and you're focused towards what you want out of dating? Check out the Dating 2020 Boot Camp. You get an accountability partner, okay? You get assigned someone who's going to help you throughout this journey. And guess who is going to be the teacher and mentor of all this? Yours truly, Chris, the Dating Doc. I'm doing an introductory price right now for those that listen to the podcast. $29.99 for this 30-day boot camp, okay? That is inexpensive as heck. Go out there. You can Google my competitors, see the prices. Why do I do it You know, so inexpensive? Because guess what? I believe in you, and I'd rather you take the plunge and do it instead of sitting back and saying that's too expensive or I don't have the time. Quit making excuses. Become a better dater, dater now. Checking out the Dating 2020 podcast. Go to the datingdoc.com, the datingdoc.com. Register now and get your accountability partner and let's get better at dating in 2020. So I had a question sent to me by uh, email and it was in regards to how do you transition from dating to a relationship? Seems common sense, right? Seems easy. Just ask them out. Just ask them. Here's the thing. There's a lot of nuances. It's a lot of second guessing, a lot of assumptions, a lot of is he being desperate? She being desperate? Is he not interested enough? Is it too soon? Is it too late to ask for that relationship? Why does he assume I'm even ready for a relationship? Not that easy. Not that easy to transition from dating to to relationship. So this is a surefire way of transitioning from dating someone to a relationship. You can make a couple of subtle jokes, right? You can say, hey... uh, Look, I know you got about 50 potential dates, but I'm hoping I can at least make your top 10%. And this is, you know, it's subtle, but it's funny because it's a good way for you to find out where you sit at. And you can get a response, right? You can say, yeah, you're definitely in the top 10%. Oh, you know, you're, you're, you barely made the 11% cut. And at least there's a little bit of that. You're kind of putting them on the spot. And, and if you are top 10%, you know, for real, then you know that he or she likes you. It's a great thing. And the reason you do this is because you want to kind of make light of the situation that he or she might be talking to other singles, might be going on other dates. So you're not like desperately clinging for this person to be the only person. You just want to see where you sit at. Because you, you need to have that self-confidence. You, you, you can't be the type of person that says, well, crap, you know, like, I need, I, need to, I need to cuff this person before they go off and date other people. No, you're so self-confident, you're almost not even jealous about it. You know that you're a good single. You know that he or she likes you. And a follow-up from that is, well, I know a lot of guys like you. Right. If, if, if I'm a guy talking to a girl or vice versa or together, whatever, um, you can say, you know, um, say, look, I've been enjoying our dates. I'll be honest. 
I know you're talking to other people, but I'm kind of greedy about it. I want to get more time with you. Now that shows a little bit of like, wow, this person likes me. And this person is, is pushing themselves in, in, in a new category. They're being assertive about wanting to spend time with me in a non-desperate way. All right? So they're they're not they're not in this like, hey, I want us to see each other more. I'm frustrated. I, you know, I don't like the fact that I don't know where we're at. No, you don't you don't lead with that kind of like a negativity or, or demands or or ultimatums. No. You go more with the approach of, and, and it has to come natural. And, and that's the kind of mindset I can teach you is how to, how to make it feel natural. That's where you're like, hey, I, I'm chill. I know that you might be seeing other people because you're high value single, right? If you're, if you're, if you're a person I want to be with, more than likely other people find you attractive or they like your personality or both. And um, I want to grab some more of that time with you. I want to see how we vibe. I like the way we vibe. And you go from there, you, you get that going, right? Now you're seeing that, hey, this person obviously wants more of my time. More than likely, they want something serious. They want to devote their time. More than likely, they want to devote more of themselves. And as that goes, right, as hopefully you get a positive response to that. If you don't, then, hey, that's, that's an easy way to filter that out. If you get a good response to that. Take advantage of that. You keep going out more. And then eventually you're like, look, um, I'm not the type that wants to be endlessly swiping or endlessly dating until I'm 80. I like I like kind of the way things are going with us. And, um, you know, I promise I won't be boring. Not every day. But uh, how about we try this? Say it just like that. Give them about 24 hours to answer. You say, you know what? You don't even have to answer right now. I want you to think about it all. I want you to think about the fact that you're going to have to deal with my lazy days where I just want to watch Netflix, that we can go out and, 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 and have our drinks, that we can misbehave when no one's looking, right? You got to keep it fun. You got to keep it wholesome as well. Um, the fact that um, now instead of spending time on apps, we can be spending time sending each other memes, right? Instead of swiping, we're sending each other memes. So um, you kind of frame it in a way where you're you're telling that person, here's all the left and right limits of what's going to be happening, right? This is the kind of stuff to look forward to. Knowing that when you wake up, there is one person that's all about you. You frame it in that way. And again, if they get scared, more than likely, they're intimidated by a relationship. They're not ready. Got that. You can pull pull away a little bit, try again, or you can totally drop the person. If they're like, they respond again, 24 hours or less, and they tell you, let's do it, then bam, you have exclusivity. That's what you want to get to, right? A lot of people are out there dating. They don't know what they want. You got to focus yourself. Tell them what you want. Tell them what you want, what you really, really want, right? So just to recap, again, you want to make sure that you don't come off desperate, but you assert your position and then bam, you frame it. You let them know this is what to expect. This is what's going on. And then close the deal. Keep wasting your time. And what's going to happen is you're never going to get there because you're too scared. Probably because the approach scares you. I could help you with that. Okay. So if you're listening to this and you're like, ooh, okay, I get it, but I still need to cover those gaps. I still need to understand a little bit something else. This is why I do this. My profession is to help you out, get you more focused, and get you where you need to be at dating wise. Anyways, I hope you like that. Let's keep on with this podcast. This wraps up the third 
episode of the Dating Doc Podcast, and uh, we could use some ideas from you, the listener. If you are wanting to uh, listen to a divorce lawyer who can talk about maybe the, some examples of the craziest stories they've had from past clients, it can be something like a technologist that I know who can talk about why is it that apps are built a certain way and what makes them addictive, right? And that can be relevant to uh, dating apps. We can even go total left field. I have a friend of mine who likes to talk about cupcakes. She makes them, that's her business. We can talk about how that relates to dating. I have a friend who talks about the openness of BDSM, polymory, and other types of uh, relationships. So um, any ideas, any topics, any subjects you want me to bring in, um, any lessons, things that have been affecting you dating wise and you'd like a little more clarification on, let me know. Hope you've enjoyed it. Take care.